Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm doing my very first ever furniture makeover where I'm going to turn this cube storage bin thing um, from white to black. This thing is so old and so tore up and scraped up and beat up, but I wanted to sit plants on it, so I decided to paint it black so it can go with the color of everything else in the room. This is my very first time doing anything like this, so during the video, I'll be telling you how I save money on some supplies, because for most of them, I use gift cards. I'm just gonna be honest. So first, I just cleaned the cube up. Like I said, it was pretty old and dirty, so I just cleaned it up. Next, I took these back pieces off. Um, just because I was gonna paint the whole thing and I didn't want them to be on there anymore, so I just took them off. Um, be careful with these things because when I pulled them off, I thought that the nails stayed in the cube, but not all of them did, and I ended up stepping on a nail, and it was just a time, so be careful if you're going to do this makeover. Next, I hammered all of the nails that were remaining in the storage unit. I, I don't know if it's storage unit, in this cube thing. I hammered all of them in, just so they wouldn't be sticking out after I paint it over them. So that is what you see me doing here. And then in a few seconds, I'm gonna give you a closer view of what I'm actually doing. See, so these little nails were sticking out from me pulling those cardboard pieces off. So I'm just gonna hammer them in. Next, I went around the whole cube. Um, they have like these little covers over the nails. So I went and took those off. And then I also tightened all of the nails to make sure that they were in as flat as they could be so that when I painted, I didn't like have these nails sticking out. then this is a closer look at what I was actually doing, just taking the covers off and tightening the screws or the nails or whatever. So here is where I made the first mistake. I purchased this wood filler from Lowe's because I thought it was a good idea to kind of put it over the nails and put it over that scrape. Number one, you can already see I can't even get it open. So we're gonna struggle with that. Number two, I had to wear a mask to do this. I probably should have been putting it on outside because even with all the windows in the house open, I still felt like I could pass out. So this stuff was strong. Um, I just was moving too fast because it was raining the day I did this and I wanted to like get it done. So I did this in the house. So first I would recommend not using this in the house. Second, uh, it didn't really do much for these nails and you can see the wood filler through the paint. So my recommendation is if this is your first time doing any makeover like it was for me, just do the bare minimum. It did work for this scrape though, like that blended pretty well, but the nails, it just kinda was a waste of my time and you could still see the wood filler through the paint. So I'm gonna vote to not do this if you decide to do this makeover. All right, and that is how it looked all wet. So you have to let this dry and then you sand it off. Next, I purchased this sanding block from Lowe's because I purchased a sander from Black & Decker, which you are going to see later on in this video. But I, to save money, I purchased it used. So it was maybe like $35 if it was new, I don't remember, but used it was $19. So I was like, okay, let me save money since I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna get this used one. The used one came, it didn't have the dust catcher or whatever. So I'm waiting for Black & Decker to send me a new one. So although it was cheap, they're still sending it for free. I just didn't know if I should use it without the dust covering. But then using this block took forever and then it started raining. So I just eventually had to start using the sander, which you're gonna see me use in a few because I wasn't gonna keep doing this. And I don't know if the sanding block wasn't tough enough or what, but I just really and truly wasn't getting it smooth. 
I don't know a lot about sanding blocks. So I don't know if this is a good one. So I ended up just using that sander and putting a mask on. All right, so this is the Black & Decker sander. That little piece on the end should have a black cap over it to catch the dust. So at first, I wasn't paying attention. It was blowing in my face. As you can see here, <laughs> it's blowing out of there as I'm sanding. But I really liked this sander and I would recommend getting it. I also have absolutely no idea what grit sandpaper was on it, but a sandpaper little circle thing did come with this even being used. Like everything that was supposed to come with it came with it, except, well, except for that little dust bag, but Black & Decker took care of that immediately. It was no problems when I contacted them to get it sent out to me. All right, so after I did all that sanding, I wiped it down so I can take it back in the house because it was about to rain. And this is what it looked like after I finished sanding. And again, I don't know if I was supposed to sand it more because I don't know what I'm doing. Thanks for watching though. All right, next I use this paint set that I got from Amazon. It came with two big brushes, two little brushes, a hand brush and a paint mixer. And then I'm also gonna use this paint that I got from Lowe's. And we're just going to paint over everything. Uh, eventually I'm going to put a mask on because this paint is also strong. I thought because it said interior, it would be all right. But yeah, I thought it was gonna die. So if you can paint outside, even if it's interior paint, I would recommend painting outside because these fumes were not what's up. This paint also chipped a little bit, um, so I think that maybe I should have put a primer on it, but we'll test it out for the next project. So I hope you guys keep watching to see me get better because that's all I can do is get better and learn more about this furniture painting. All right, so this is it after one coat. I did put two coats of paint on this, but it was getting late and dark and it was after I stepped on that nail. So I didn't record it, but I did two coats of this black paint. All right, so the next day I wanted to replace those squares with this burlap and staple gun that I got off Amazon, which I'll link below. But what I slowly realized is that my staple gun was not strong enough to make it through that cube. So the staples just weren't going through. I don't know if I did not push it hard enough or what. I tried different types of staples like the straight staples. 
the staples that look like little rectangles at the top i tried it all and they were not budging so i ended up pulling out this gorilla glue that i purchased from lowe's i can't link it because i got it from in the store but yeah all right so the way i had to do this is the direction says that the glue works better when you dab the surface with like a wet towel or something so i used a towel and made the surface a little wet and put some Gorilla Glue on there. A little goes a long way because once I use my method to get it to stick, some of the glue like oozed out and got on the inside of the cube. And when I tried to pick it off, it peeled the paint. So learn from me, put a little and then add if you need to. Um, the directions for the glue also said that you should clamp whatever you're trying to glue. I didn't have any clamps, so what you're going to see me do in a second is take random empty boxes that I found in the house, and then I put heavy things in them. See, it's a pair of shoes in there. And then I pull the burlap around the box, and then just let it stay there so that it can stick and stay on. Two things about this. Thing one. This burlap smelled terrible. I don't know if that is how it normally smells, but the smell was so strong. I was like, I have to go outside. I was so happy it stopped raining so I can go outside and finish this project. Also, if you are going to use boxes like I did, the Gorilla Glue can come through the burlap. So after you have put it on the item for like five minutes, I would go in and take it off let it air dry for a few minutes and then put it back on just so the box doesn't get stuck to the burlap so here you see me doing the same thing just evening it out put the box on there put the heavy stuff in there and then pull the burlap so that it's tight so that when the box is gone the burlap won't be like sinking in the middle or real loose you know like some loose panties or something <laughs> Okay, anyway, back on track. But yeah, I did this for all of the cubes that originally had a piece of cardboard on them. So the backs would still be kind of closed in, but you could still see through it. So that the plants could get some sun. Alright, so after the glue dried, I went around and cut the extra fabric off. This made a mess. It was little burlap flakes all over the place, but... I felt like this was still pretty easy and the cleanup wasn't too much. I'm going to go back to another step in this tutorial. I guess that's what this is, a tutorial or just watching me paint this thing and seeing if you want to do it too. <laughs> anyway, I painted this cube over a sheet. So like I just put a sheet on the floor and put the cube over it so I can paint, thinking that it would catch the paint. Oh, it caught the paint, but if the spot was like too big or something, it would go through the sheet. So one thing I learned was that I need something plastic if I am going to paint in the house again. The paint came off the floor very easy, but I have hardwood floors. So if you have carpet, it could be different. So just get some plastic or do it outside a box, something, not a sheet. I'm going to say it again. Don't use a sheet to paint anything All right, and here I am wiping it down for the 15th time. And you see that sheet? Don't use that sheet. Don't use a sheet. <laughs> Don't use a sheet. I'm going to say it again. Don't use a sheet. Paint will get on your floor. But I'm wiping it down so I can now put this protective finisher that the guy at Lowe's told me I needed. He came and found me after I got the paint and told me I needed this. This also smells terrible but it put a cute little gloss on this terrible paint job so I was happy about that
All right, so we have made it to the end. I'm gonna remind you guys what it looked like before. And here's the after. Y'all see my plants? I'm so excited about those plants and they are very happy to have a new cute place to sit. Here are just a few of the little imperfections in this job. As I stated, it was my first time ever doing anything like this and you have to live and learn, right? So I'm aware of some things I need to change next time and I'm really excited to show you guys the next project in this plant room because I have a few things coming. So if you have stayed this long and you're a newbie like me, even if you're not, if you enjoyed this video, like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment and let me know what you would like to see next. And I look forward to you watching my next videos. Thank you so much and I will see you guys next time.